What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today. And today I am playing Vicaray, one of my favorite decks of this format. Apparently, there are a handful of them in day two of the Latin America International Championships. I am so excited to hear that. I had actually disassembled my Vicaray list, but it turns out I had to rebuild it because apparently I just did not believe hard enough. But now that I'm a believer, again, thanks to those. Uh, uh, those valiant few out in the LAIC who are still rocking Vicare. I've got my favorite deck back. So I'm going to be playing this, showing the deck off again, see what it could do in this current standard format with Lost Thunder legal, legal. Apparently, there are just a ton of Zorark decks doing very well in LAIC. And it makes sense. The Zorark control decks do very good against a lot of these non-GX decks that were very, very hyped heading into the Latin America International Championships. We had things like Grand Bull, decks like Alolan Executor, and then uh, also some things like Pasimian, uh, as well as Lost March, all kind of looking like they were going to be hype, right? So Zora Control does well against most of those decks. So Zora Control ended up being a very popular choice for the LAIC, and sure enough, Vika Ray just gets in here and does exactly what it's always done <laughs> and could be very powerful against these Zora control decks. Uh, can also go toe to toe with Blacephalon if you just happen to, um, you know, uh, if you happen to kind of tee off and go first and have some things go well, you could definitely be a Blacephalon deck as well, of which there are a few. At the LAIC. Now, this is kind of a classic, like uh, I'm gonna Guzma and probably Tempest Hand, but it looks like I am playing against a Lolan Executor, perhaps that, or a uh, maybe a dedicated Septile deck. So I'm thinking that I might not want to just go in with a Rayquaza, but honestly, I don't really have too much else going on. My opponent's only got a two card hand. So I think I'm going to just, uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go in. Guzma up that Trico and go from there. I suspect that I am playing against a Septile deck. That's what it appears to be since this thing's got a choice band on it. Uh, I guess I don't really know, but I don't think that my opponent would have put a choice band on the Trico unless they had some plans to attack with it. So we're going to mill and then we're going to attach our grass. Guzma up, I guess the Orangaru since that thing may end up eventually attacking. The Oranguru will never attack. And then we're going to Tempest GX. And one of the great things about Vika Ray in this current standard format is that there are almost no judge, uh, almost no hand uh, shuffling, you know, cards being played right now. Uh, very, very little judge. Uh, I guess, you know, probably Zora Control plays judge just like it always did. But most other decks are just going to let you stick with that Tempest hand, which is insane, right? Uh, so, so good. So I cannot believe that Vika Ray is still out here. It's one of my favorite decks. I'm just like, you know, grinning ear to ear. I cannot even believe it. But I'm still, uh, yes, just very, very excited overall. So still no quite idea what my opponent's doing. Now that I see the, you know, Fomantis, it makes me think that it was a lull and execute. Uh, Lone Executor, but definitely no uh, surefire signs of that. I've got a Vikavol hand though, so we're just going to go ahead and Volkner for the Ultra Ball in order to get ourselves what we need there. And then I don't really need the Lightning Energy since I do have two Grass Energies in my hand already. That should be fine as far as placing, uh, you know, energy attachments from hands go. I think I will Ultra Ball away this Mysterious Treasure and the Lele. I don't plan on playing those. Let's get a Vika Volt. And here we go with the turn to Vika Volt, as this deck, you know, loves to do. And now we get to just tee off. We're going to Strong Charge, and we're going to get an energy on the active, an energy on the bench. It feels good to be back. Tell you what, we did that other video with Rayquaza Naganadel, but now just knowing that I could just play, you know, I could just play Rayquaza Vika Volt. Uh, why even change? Why change? It doesn't matter. Uh, I think, yes, I've already Volknered. I don't necessarily want to throw down that other Rayquaza yet until I figure out exactly what my opponent is doing. So we're going to kind of stay the course. My opponent is playing Alolan Executor. This actually is a horrible matchup for me. 
<laughs> I could play like the uh, Giraffe Rig in here if I was really worried about Alolan Executor, but I'm not like super, super worried about it. The problem with that matchup is that Shining Lugia only does 130 damage and Alolan Executor has 160 hit points. So if uh, my opponent were to knock me out with an Alolan Executor, I would have pretty much no response. But, oh, this is a Lorantis deck. All right, now things have been revealed. We are playing against Lorantis GX with the promo Lorantis as well. So my opponent plans on kind of juicing their damage output in that kind of way. So now I am safe to just slam down these Rayquaza GXs and just load as much energy into play as I possibly can. That is just going to be the maneuver here. I'm going to, let's see, Ultra Ball away the Guzma and a Lightning Energy. I'm just like going all in at this point and there's nothing really that I want there. I could get... You know, I, I could get, like, Marshadow and Let Loose or something. I could get another Rayquaza, and we could throw both of them into play and just go all in this turn. Eh, potentially. We'll get a Rayquaza out. short. Sure. I have an Energy Recycler in hand, so I feel just safe going in and milling this turn. It doesn't really matter. I can mill with both of these guys. Just slam a bunch of energy into play. Literally doesn't matter what I discard since I already have the energy recycler ready to go. And you notice that I did the ability before I strong charge so that I could, you know, have a higher chance of actually hitting some energy. Now I just have a board absolutely, you know, filled with energy. Absolutely ridiculous board positioning here. And this is just why V Garay is still good. I mean, there's no stopping this deck once it gets going. Uh, I even got a switch. I could attack with a fresh... Rayquaza and knocking out the Vika Volt does nothing to my board state. You know, now it's just like, if you're going to keep putting down GX Pokemon, you're just going to be in a world of pain. 300 damage there, complete overkill, absolutely ridiculous. I even got a non-GX Pokemon, you know, kind of loaded and ready to go. I could easily knock out these Lorantis on the bench if I wanted to, and so on and so forth. Interesting to see, though. I think my opponent is probably trying to gear up for a Solar Blade attack here. They could also Chlorocythe GX me. So that is something uh, I have to look out for. But they just scooped it up. They're like, yeah, 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 no, I'm not dealing with what that Vigare deck is cooking over there. A little bit too much uh, aggression, probably. But let's uh, get in there again with Vigare. Apparently, Passimian is doing well at the LAIC, too, and Blacephalon. I'm excited to see Blacephalon doing well uh, as well. I knew Blacephalon just a solid deck, honestly. It's kind of good for the same reasons that Vika Ray is good. It's just a very simple, uh, easy-to-execute, kind of one-hit-KO-everything kind of deck. Very aggressive. I love that Blacephalon is just all basic Pokemon. But honestly, Rayquaza Vika Volt almost plays like a big basic deck anyway, since you just need to kind of pull off your one trick. You just get the stage two out, then the whole deck is off, right? The whole deck just kind of gets itself going. It looks like we might be playing against a mirror here, so that is super interesting as well. I think that I want to... Hmm, I could uh, Ultra Ball for a Lele and get myself a... That actually is not a horrible idea. I could Ultra Ball for a Lele and get myself a Stevens. My opponent probably will be able to take care of that. Like, you know, but we'll we'll see what we could get away with here. We're going to Ultra Ball these away. We're going to get ourselves a Lele and go for that Stevens if it's an option, which it is. So I think that just seems like the best route here to take. Then we'll Cynthia turn two. Yup, let's get a supporter card. Uh, we need Esteban and his resolve. All right, let's go. Then uh, we are going to attach a grass energy here and Stevens to end our turn. Get ourselves a Vega Volt, a rare candy, and probably also another energy would be good. So, I mean, that way I'm doing. My max amount of damage turn two. I could also get like a rescue stretcher to get that ray back. That could, seems kind of silly though. I think I would rather just go in and get rare candy beagle and an energy. Sure. 
That way I make sure I don't miss that turn two energy attachment from hand and you know we're kind of off to the races here. See what my opponent's got going on. I guess I could have gotten like a Mars Shadow to let loose my opponent if they had done something like uh, you know Tempest GX or whatever. But we see Acro Bikes and Nest Balls coming down from my opponent. So they've got a very different list than me. They might be playing uh, Vikabulu, which is a possibility for sure. I think uh, usually when I see like high counts of Nest Balls in a deck, I suspect Bulu. But no, they are playing Vika Ray. They are just opting to play a little bit of a different list with Acro Bikes and such but they don't really have too much going on in that hand of theirs so that is going to be very very sad all right we've got the rare candy Vika Volt. we've got another rayquaza we've got an energy in the discard pile let's go ahead and stormy winds oh no we milled an energy recycler but that's fine you know whatever we'll we'll be all right all right strong charge here i'm not too worried i think i'm knocking out yeah i'm knocking out the only grub in my opponent has in play I messed that one up, whatever, I should have put the lightning on the active, but we're just trying to burn through this right now because I think that we just win the matchup. I don't think that there's any hope for my opponent anymore. Yup, and sure enough, Scoop City, all right, we got there, 2-0 with Mika Ray. Let's keep this train moving, all right. On to the third one with uh, my favorite deck, sweet Mika Ray. Gosh, I cannot believe... Vika Ray, it's funny that the metagame just kind of, you know, how it comes around full circle sometimes. Uh, apparently, Grand Bull is still doing well at uh, LAIC. Apparently, Tord is playing Grand Bull. So, you know, that is a deck that I would hate to play as a Vika Volt player. I'm not exactly sure that there's anything that Vika Ray could do uh, to account for that matchup. And unless you're literally going to jam a muck in here. Which you could do, because uh, we have three Shining Lugia in here right now, which are more or less pointless, uh, you know, unless you're playing against Passimian. So I guess, like, the three Shining Lugia are very good against Passimian, which is why that I've kept them in here, because apparently Passimian is doing well at LAIC. But if Grand Bull is more of a threat, then you're just better off playing... Um, you're better off playing a muck line. So you could easily put a muck in here. Uh, you got mysterious treasure already. Muck is psychic type. So you can just go get your Grimer and go get your muck all with mysterious treasure. Maybe bump your mysterious treasure count to four. And you could play a 1-1 one, one muck line. So that's a thing you could do. And then that would make it more difficult for Gramble to keep their kind of strategy going. Alolan muck is very good against, uh, oh, and, you know, there we go. Isn't that just fascinating? Okay, so we are playing against a Grand Bull deck here. It's not what I wanted to see, but that is fine. Um, here, I think, uh, is my opponent going to get a, a turn one knockout on me here? You know, it's hard hard to tell, hard to say. Uh, they didn't. They played an Apricorn Maker. They wouldn't play an Apricorn Maker unless they were, like, pretty sure that they had it. So let's like Guzma. Uh, should we Guzma something up? No, I don't need to Guzma. I already got the Slugman the active, which is more or less what I want. So I could just Ultra Ball and I could, you know, play Volkner. Um, I could Ultra Ball for like a Marshadow, I guess. I kind of want a Marshadow and I want a, uh, yeah, that's a little bit greedy though. So I think we're just going to do this. I think we're going to Ultra Ball for a, hmm, that is greedy. I want a Marshadow bad, um, but I don't think that I kind of have it because I want to save my Energy Recycler, but I just don't think that I'm going to be able to do all that. So we get rid of the Volkner and the Guzma, and then I would Ultra Ball away the Energy Recycler and that to get a Marshadow. That seems like doing a lot, honestly. So I think I just want to guarantee the Tempest. I know I'm like overthinking this a lot. Yeah, I think I just want to guarantee the Tempest here. So that or I get, you know, like I said, I get the Marshadow. Hmm. I mean, either way, I'm, I'm losing a Energy Recycler. So I think I just like am super, uh, you know, punished if I just let loose into like a 
I don't know, if I don't let loose into a grass, I'm punished. There's like a bunch of things that could punish me here. Uh, but we haven't played our supporter, so we're actually like got a golden hand here. This is like pretty sick. Uh, then I more or less just hang on tight and hope things buff out here and hope that my opponent does not get the turn two knockout. I think I want to go in and attach just a lightning energy to my Shining Lugia. And I'm just going to keep it like that. Hopefully my opponent's five card hand cannot be pared down into a knockout on my Rayquaza. That would be ideal for me. Uh, but yeah, Grand Bull just seems like a horrible matchup, especially since I just started the Rayquaza. I should have kind of looked and seen what the situation was going to be. They've already got the Snubble as well. Now they just literally stack a switch on top of that deck. So long as those other two cards are burnable there, they are just going to be smooth sailing. And this is the reason, literally, Grand Bull is like the reason that I thought that Beaker Ray was like kind of on the back seat right now. But, you know, my opponent is showing that this deck could be very strong right now. They are, uh, uh, you know, my opponent is... Ooh, we got something in my eye. Um, probably about to stunt on me, but they might not. Uh, they just instructed blindly without stacking with McCargo, so they might not have it, which would be pretty interesting. They got Apricorn Maker, but that does not mean that they are going to be able to. Let's see. I guess if they Apricorn Maker, they could get like an Ultra Ball or Great Ball Nest Ball. I was going to say they could like pair their hand down, get another McCargo out. And then I guess they could stack their deck again, but then they can't instruct again. So they need to get a second Oranguru, which is what I guess that they're going to get now. And then they're going to Great Ball, and then they're going to hope that they get another Magcargo in order to then stack again, which I guess is kind of what we got going on here. Either way, I think this matchup is just going to be kind of, uh, kind of horrible. So we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll be patient, though. I'm not going to try and call it yet. We're going to try to have a little bit of faith here and see how things end up buffing out. But this is a... Oh, they just don't have anything that they can pare down. So that is it. Okay, so we need to tread a little bit lightly here. I mean, we can knock out the Slugma. Then my opponent's going to respond with the Gramble. Then I can respond with the Shining Lugia. It's, you know, it's it's not great, all right? It's not fantastic, but this is just what we got going on here. So I feel like we just kind of have to go with it. I don't think that we have any other options. And we only got one energy recycler, which is, like, pretty horrible for us. So we kind of hope that my opponent's engine kind of, like, you know, hiccups somewhere. And otherwise, that's just, like, all we could do. Because, you know, we're kind of just walking into this here, but we didn't have a Guzma, we didn't have anything else. I would have loved to have guzma would up, uh, I guess, that Gramble and kind of taken that out. But we know, we know what's happening here. This is just going to be straightforward and kind of, and kind of bad, yeah. They've got both Grambles out now. They've got two Oranguru, they got the Macargo. I kind of need to knock out the other Macargo. That would help me for sure. Uh, in order to kind of disrupt the the paring down of the hand. Uh, and it's like definitely annoying playing against Granville because they're, all their turns are like, they're solving a puzzle. It takes so long, right? Because they're like trying to like math it out in their head. And I'm sure like I've, I am not the one to, you know, complain about people taking long on turns. I'm sure all of my opponents ever on PTCGO are probably like, who is this guy and why does he run the timer down every single turn? It's probably absolutely uh, horrendous doing that. But, oh, another thing. Uh, Sean and I just started a brand new channel uh, on Full Grip Games. So Full Grip Games YouTube channel, we're going to be doing a ton of table stop there. We've got some uh, Key Forge stuff going on. Going to have some Magic the Gathering content there as well. And we'll have some Pokemon content there too. Some tabletop Pokemon content. So I'm really excited about that. If you are into Key Forge Magic, tabletop games at all, 
make sure to go check out uh, Full Grip Games YouTube channel. We just started it, so I'm really excited. Don't worry, it's not gonna take away from any content that we're pumping out here on Tricky Gym at all. It's gonna be kind of both all together, so it's going to be fantastic, but more, you know, more content. What's not to like about that? So please go like, sub to the channel, and check out our very first Keyforge video that we got up there right now. So little toss out there to our new YouTube channel. It is very difficult lifting a YouTube channel kind of out from nowhere. So that is, uh, that is going to be quite the process. But you can be one of the very first people to sub to the channel and check out our new videos. The videos are going to be super high quality, as you guys already know from, you know, kind of watching my stuff that I produce. I don't really mess around with the whole quality aspect of things. So you can expect there to be, you know, just kind of, you know, grade A quality with whatever I am doing. Yikes. All right. So we're, we're just trying to grind out this, you know, situation here. I think we're going to need an energy recycler eventually. I don't think that I'm going to need another, uh, you know, I might actually eventually need another Vika Volt out. That's fine. So we'll get that. And I guess I'll need another energy to attach to. We are just kind of grinding this game out right now. I'm not exactly sure that I'll... Ooh, we can get the switch and that out of here. Sure, we can get another Vika Volt. And that's like eventually what we're going to do. I know I just benched that grub in. Oh, did I? No, never mind. Okay, I'm just talking. Cool. So we can arrow force this thing for knockout. But we're just not going to be able to do anything kind of about <laughs> this... Uh, about this whole grand bowl machine my opponent's got going. Not only that, they're up on prizes too, which is just absolutely horrible for me. I've got a Lele, you know, maybe I can knock out the McCargo next turn. I go for a Guzma. That was kind of like my hope. But at this point, I'm very low on energy as well. So I need to be wary of that. Uh, or I need my opponent to just miss a Snubble, right? Like we just need some part of their machine to stop working, but it's looking like that's probably just not what's going to be happening here anytime soon. They'll be able to do it. Gramble's a deck where I feel like you're more or less playing against, you know, they're playing against themselves. I know what I'm going to see every turn. I'm going to see a Gramble with 130 hit points swinging for 160 damage every single turn. And so long as they can keep doing that every single turn, they're probably going to win. If at any point they mess it up, then they might not win, right? I just have to keep my machine going. They have to keep their machine going. And this is like kind of, it's actually kind of a, like, it's not a super fun part about the format is these, the non-GX decks are a lot of fun to play when you're playing against all GX decks. But when the format boils down to just, you know, a bunch of non-GX decks over and over again, it's just, uh, it kind of gets, yeah, it gets a little stale. I don't really love it. But let's see. All right. So my opponent has the Snubble. They've got a second, you know, uh, Slugma. That was a good grab for them off of that. So they probably have everything they need to get another attacker going. But they could miss. They could miss something. You know, it, it could happen. I need to see some things. All right. So let's Mysterious Treasure here and take a look at the deck. See what we end up getting. We got Energy Recycler in there. How many energy do I actually have in the deck? Four, exactly. So I have enough to attack one more time. I'm probably going to go grab a supporter just to see some more cards. I think I would like to see probably Lily this turn since I'm going to Strong Charge. Yeah, we're just going to do these two there um, to the Lugia. And then I'm going to Strong Charge again. And I need to see like Rescue Stretcher. I need to see a bunch of stuff and you know even when we shuffle five energy back into the deck we're you know and i should have i i kind of messed that up i should have only attached one energy there and then attached this one from hand for turn but i think we're pretty much losing this game anyways uh just because we're out of resources so oh well let's just we're gonna cynthia that's fine i'll just i wanted a lily here but we'll just cynthia instead it's like the same effect for almost no difference so let's just do that, and sure, we'll see if we get ourselves an energy recycler. We'll see if we get ourselves a rescue stretcher. Rescue, rescue stretcher is good. That is a thing that I needed. So we'll get the shining Lugia back, and then next turn we desperately need a. Uh, <laughs> we desperately need that energy recycler, and as you guys can see. 
Uh, oh my gosh, that Granville's got a dumbbells on it. Oh yeah, this game. I was like not even paying attention to that. This game is just absolutely over. There's like nothing I can do about it. I was I was like not paying attention during my opponent's turn at all. They've got everything they need. All right, you've got a good deck, sir. Uh, I'm out of here. Sayonara. Oh yeah, yeah. Goodbye. We we're gonna try one more here with our Vika Ray deck. The Granville matchup is just miserable, but I could have, yeah, I could have told you that. We didn't have to play that for y'all to see that. That of course it's gonna be a horrible matchup, unless we're playing the Muck, like I said. And we could tech Muck in here, but like we're kind of just still trying to figure that all out, honestly, as to like what the best techs are for a Vika Ray uh, deck in this current standard format. And, you know, uh, this is still my same list from Oaks, Pennsylvania. It hasn't changed one bit, uh, which is, you know, good and bad. It's good because that means I mean, the list is just still good. It's just a solid Vika Ray deck. But the three Shining Lugia in here, I think that that's probably not the way to go anymore. I think we probably could utilize that space for other things so i'm thinking that that's gonna be kind of a thing of the past and that we might move past shining lugia but i'm not entirely sure shining lugia is really good against Pissimian, so that would be kind of a valid reason to still play it but uh, i'm not exactly sure how popular Pissimian decks are going to be and if gramble is more popular than Pissimian, then you might just be better off playing um you might just be better off playing the muck instead. So I'm going to start off with a strong turn one Lily here. That's fantastic. We've got two energy in play. So we're good to go. We're just rare candy into Vika Vault next turn. We've got a Cynth uh, Cynthia as well. Now this deck was getting, you know, I guess I was like worried that it wouldn't be quite as aggressive as like your Blacephalon decks. But honestly, this deck gets like, uh, turn 200 something damage like all the time and then gets turn three you know pretty much one hit KOs from there on out which is basically exactly what Blacephalon kind of does except Blacephalon does have that turn one burst GX which can kind of get you started in uh, you know in a better direction usually than most uh, you know Vika Ray decks. Vika Ray decks not going to be taking a prize on the first turn and Blacephalon does have that option. That being said, Rayquaza does have some things going for it in that, you know, it does have a way around like Sceptile and stuff, but even as far as like uh, Sceptile goes, like you're probably not beating an Alolan Executor deck with this either. So you might just take all the Shining Lugias that are in here and you might scrap them from di for different techs entirely. You could play a Giraffe Rig in here, which is searchable with Mysterious Treasure. You could play the Muck Lion, like I said, which is searchable with Mysterious Treasure as well. And that might actually help your case more. So let's see what we got going on here. I could get two Vika Volts into play this turn. I don't think that I can Guzma knock anything out. I doubt my opponent is going to be attacking turn two. So I think I just get my stuff into play here and go from there. So let's Mysterious Treasure. I think I just get a Lele for Volkner and just go get that yeah, other rare candy. This just seems like too good to pass up, I think. Just being able to completely overwhelm my opponent. Uh, yep, yeah, so let's get both of those. I'm going to get a Volkner, and then we'll get a rare candy and a lightning energy, which would be sweet. Yep, so let's do that. And I guess, yeah, my opponent would have to get like a bunch of energy to play, which they're not going to be able to get with only... Um, with only one copy of Naganadel, I don't think that they'll be able to do it. They, yeah, yeah, they're probably looking to like use full voltage GX or something like that to kind of charge their field. I don't think that they're going to be able to, you know, put all this together into 180 damage. If they do, they pretty much win. I don't think that there's any way that I would be able to keep up with that, but I just don't think that they can. Uh, my opponent, on the other hand, is going to be trying to figure out how they are going to deal with the fact that I have got two weak volts out turn two. This is a busted deck. All right, great. And we have got a turn two, like 180 damage here, which is just completely nuts. And I feel like I could have done more potentially, but I, you know, I decided to grab that lightning energy there off of the uh, Volkner just to have to attach for next turn. So 
completely wild. There's another lightning energy as well. We could toss back into the deck with Cynthia so that we can accelerate it with Rayquaza. Now, okay, maybe I spoke too soon. My opponent does have choice bands in their deck. They've promoted the Rayquaza, but I guess, okay, it does have free retreat with Thunderclap Zone, and I keep forgetting that uh, the, uh, the Zorora does give them free retreat. Now, interestingly, enough i'm not actually playing zorora in my current list i think zorora goes really well in like uh kind of big basic version of rayquaza where like the expanded version right where you're just playing rayquazas and nothing else because you could just lean on that full voltage gx to get energy much better in expanded to where you have battle compressor and all of that but with vikavo i don't think you actually want to waste any turns using full voltage gx i think you just want to be attacking every single turn uh and then there's almost no reason to full voltage gx when you could just charge up your pokemon with strong charge so i would rather dedicate more space to the deck for that and then also, since I'm not currently playing Choice Band in my deck, that's kind of what the final reason why I'm not playing Zorora in my current list is because I don't actually have Choice Bands in here. But if I did have Choice Bands in here, then I would, you know, I would probably play it. So let's see what we got here. We've got a Lightning in the discard pile. I don't actually think that I can lose this game now that we are at this point. So let's take a look at what we got in the deck here real quick. I think I'm just going to let loose my opponent, um, which is just, you know, nasty. That's just that's just rough. All right, strong charge. We're going to get more energy into play, and we're going to throw those here. And then we can get even more energy into play, which is just absolutely ridiculous at this point, and throw it onto that one. And then we'll let loose my opponent's giganto hand. That's fine, sure, yep, shuffle it up, draw four, and we're good to go. We've even got the Energy Recycler and two Rayquazas. We literally need nothing else in order to keep this deck just up and moving for the rest of the game. Dragon Break there, huge amount of damage, 300 damage again. Fantastic, good stuff. And now, that's the crazy thing about Rayquaza, it just creates these checkmate scenarios. My opponent's like in checkmate right now. They're just like, no way that they could skip ahead three prizes. There's no way that they can stop my board position. Even if they knock out this Rayquaza, I'm going to one prize the remaining turn. And then all I would need is basically a Guzma in order to finish off the game with this Vika Volt. So that's just it. It's a linear game and uh, you know, that's just the kind of games that Rayquaza creates, which is fun in one way because it's not too complicated. You see, like, all right, I, I slam the energy into play, and then I just, you know, go forward and attack whoever, <laughs> whoever's in the active position. But it's not super dynamic, right? Especially a Rayquaza mirror match. It's just not dynamic at all. And I imagine that Rayquaza and Blacephalon, that matchup probably plays out in a very similar fashion. It's like, all right, you know, who's got the big... GX knockout first, and then uh, so long as you can keep streaming them, you should be good to go. Here goes our Rayquaza again, and we've got both energy recyclers in our hand now. Now there's just absolutely no losing this game whatsoever. There wasn't before, now there's really not. So we can just accelerate there, we can uh, energy recycler, and that's why this deck is just never going to be bad per se. It just... Uh, does a ridiculous amount of damage. It accelerates a ridiculous amount of energy into play. And there are, you know, there are just like not a ton of decks that really could do exactly what Vika Ray does. It just does it better than most other decks that are trying to do the same thing. So there we go. How much damage are we doing now? We got Dragon Break again. And we're doing 360 damage, which is complete overkill. I don't need to be doing 360 damage. It's really pretty ridiculous. I could slow it down, but, you know, why slow it down? We out here with Rayquaza. The whole point is to just see as big of a number as we can on the screen. So I'm thinking that Vika Ray may still just be better than the Naginadel Ray, uh, you know, kind of in my personal opinion. Uh, Vika Volt just is just so insane. It just pumps energy into play so consistently. And I felt that Naginadel probably just takes up too much bench space. Uh, you know, we're kind of, you're seeing the same thing right here. And my opponent's got two Naginadel in play. 
I've got two Vika Volts in play. With Tempest GX, you can afford to be greedy with Rayquaza. You can afford to Tempest and set up two Vika Volts because there are just not a lot of Judge being played in the format. There are not a lot of uh, you know, kind of hand checking cards. Uh, even Marshadow is not being played in every single deck. And Vika Ray is just one of those decks that can beat anything. It could beat absolutely anything if you set up. So it's uh, definitely still a contender. You know, shout out to all the people playing Vika Ray, still hanging in there strong at LAIC. Definitely uh, a blast to play. And again, um, make sure to go check out the Full Grip Games YouTube channel. I'm really excited about it. We got our very first video up on there. We're opening a Keyforge starter pack. Uh, we got our first Keyforge event happening here at Full Grip Games today. I'm doing a learn to play session at 1 p.m. And then we are holding a little uh, sealed tournament as well. Keyforge is a new game created by the uh, created by Richard Garfield, the inventor of Magic the Gathering. So that was uh, just a really cool game all together. And its gimmick, if you hadn't heard about it, is that you actually cannot create your own deck, right? Every single deck comes cre uh, pre-created, but that's the thing is that every single deck is also different. So there are like over 300 cards that exist right now, and every single deck is a unique combination of those cards, and no two decks are the same. In fact, no two decks have the same name. So each deck has its own name printed on the deck, and then no other deck has that name. And it's just like a really cool, unique idea. I love it. It's gonna be fascinating to kind of see how that game grows and develops over the course of the next few months. So I'm excited about that. Uh, excited about the current state of, you know, standard format in Pokemon as well. Uh, really excited for Tag Team GX Pokemon. Also just spent all night last night playing Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee with Natalie. So that was a lot of fun as well. Uh, Red version was like my favorite Pokemon game growing up. So it's just been a blast to kind of dive back in to that, uh, into that series, right? And get to see it all in remastered graphics, which is an absolutely incredible experience. So anyways, this is my same old Vika Ray list, just still out here doing the same old thing. Vika Ray is just still a good deck apparently. So let me know, how would you change Vika Ray now for current standard format? It's obviously still a competitive deck, still got some cool stuff going on for it. I think that the Shining Lugias can probably go now. Uh, you could fit a Zorora and a couple of choice bands in here, but I would ask you, what matchup does the Zorora win you, right? That's like my big question about adding Zorora into this deck. What matchup does it win you? I don't think that it necessarily wins you any matchup. I don't think it speeds the deck up any. The deck is already blazing fast as it is, as we kind of saw by some of those games there. Uh, we get set up very quickly. So the deck doesn't need any more speed. What it needs is text for its bad matchup. So if your bad matchups are Grand Bull and non-GX decks, does Shining Lugia still do the job that it used to do for those matchups? Probably not. So we probably need to move on to different kinds of techs. We might be looking at Alolan Muck since it's really good against Scramble. We might also be looking at Giraffe Rig in case Alolan Executor is really popular. But if it's not, then don't worry about the Giraffe Rig at all. Uh, just some interesting options there to consider. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Let me know what you guys think of Vika Ray in current standard format in the comments below. Make sure to check out Full Grip Games' YouTube channel. Yes, I really want to get some subs over there. It would mean a lot to me. The channel needs subs. It is a baby. We just started it today. It's its first day. You could be one of the very first subs to Full Grip Games' YouTube channel. We've got our very first video up there. It doesn't even have 100 views yet. Oh my gosh, we need some help. We need some help over there. So thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. Check out the Etsy store and Patreon stuff in the description below. Peace.